Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm making up for something that I'm a little bit surprised by. I never actually did a video on Unit 13. Thought it would have been one of the first games I played to actually, you know, go through the backlog, make sure that I had a video on it, but no it wasn't, and when I looked on my channel for videos named under Unit 13, I never actually had a video done on it, so yeah. It's a little bit surprising, mainly because I actually nearly got the Platinum for this game. The only reason I didn't though is because you have to level up all your dudes to level 10, and that is a grind. Like for example, I had killed all the high value targets, I had done all the solo missions, and I was still at level 8 with everybody, so I would have just had to have grinded everybody up to level 10 in order to get the Platinum, which I could not be bothered to do, so... For all intents and purposes, I finished it, and I still didn't do a fucking video on it. Go me. So, this is on a fresh save file, though, so I just wanted to go from the very beginning, make sure I understood the game properly and all that, so here we are. I haven't actually played the online cooperative mode. Even back when the game first came out, I don't think I ever dipped my toe into that because I could just never find a game, and well, seven years later, I don't think I'm going to have much chance of finding a game either. The daily challenge is interesting because it pops up a sort of procedurally generated um, procedurally generated mission for you to do and obviously there's a little bit of a high score thing going on which is prevalent throughout this entire game but we won't worry about that too much at the moment because it's pretty much the same as the solo missions. And there is also some high value targets which are, well they're not even really boss fights. They're just the same sort of missions, only you just go in, kill a guy, and get out, unlike the other missions, which can have a multitude of objectives and stuff along those lines. So with that said, let's go have a look at some solo missions. So, there are four different kinds of missions we've got here. Excuse me for one second. There we go. So, as I was saying, there are four different kinds of missions you can play. There's Deadline, there's Covert, there's Elite, and there's uh, something action. I always forget the name of it. Direct action, that's the name of it. So, there are those four different kinds of missions, and they're all pretty much variations on the same thing. Direct action is the baseline. You've got Covert, which is you have to go in and do it without being seen by anybody. You have Deadline, which is do it under a time limit. And Elite, which is your health doesn't regenerate automatically and you don't get any checkpoints. That's basically the long and the short of it all. So, with that said, let's actually go hop into a mission. Plant some explosive charges, secure the security room and rescue the allied VIP. There is no story to this game whatsoever. Basically, it's just you going to different areas, blowing people up, shooting people and successfully getting through the mission. It's all about the gameplay and the score attacking. So... We're just going to go hop into this mission right here, and it's going to recommend us a person to use. Now, we have multiple different operatives, and their differences are in their stats and in their gear. So as we can see, as if I scroll through them very slowly, you can see that they've all got different stats, and they've all got different weaponry. This weaponry can be modified, of course. You get two different guns. You can also get guns from a bunch of other people once they hit a specific level. So I can actually take along an Ultimax if I feel like it, which I actually might. That sounds like a pretty cool thing to do. And you can also equip an attachment to these items. You can also equip a Sight. And you can also take along a Throwable. And of course, the, the levels of your particular agents will determine what is unlocked. So you can get someone up to level 7 and they'll, they'll unlock their throwable for everyone. Level 6, they'll unlock one of their guns. You get the general idea. Generally though, there are some situations where you want to be using someone. Like for example, there's a but for all the covert missions, you want to be using the infiltrator because all of his stuff is silenced. He's got the best stealth and he's got smoke grenades by default, which help more with the stealth. Thankfully, they recommend a dude for every single mission, and I've mainly just been sticking with the recommended dude, although I've been swapping out guns and equipment as I feel like it. So they also level up over time using score from the missions that they do, and as you can see that they get a bunch of different skills, like they unlock things, they do particular things better than other characters, you get the general idea. With all of that said, let's just go and play it. 
We got four objectives here. Two are plant explosive charges, one is secure a security room, and another is rescue an allied VIP. That's pretty much the breadth of the mission objectives in this game. The majority of it is either kill every enemy, kill every enemy in an area, or walk up to something and press the interact button. At which point, you may need to run away in order not to die in an explosion, but... Well, that's just kind of a thing that happens in these sorts of games. So, we have a lot to do on this one, so stay frusty. Got it. Let's go. Uh, we have to go this way, apparently, because... Frankly, trying to navigate these areas without the crazy taxi sort of arrow going up on the top of the screen there is kind of annoying, if I'm being honest. Oh, that's a camera. There we go. So... The game... Eliminate the watcher and you're pretty much guaranteed that the camera's pointed at you no longer matter. Okay. Go into first person view here, lock on, and shoot away. There we go. Alright, so we have to clear the room, I take it? Indeed, we do. So the game is a relatively basic third person shooter. You've already seen most of the mechanics that are available. You've got a gun and you can fire it using the L button to aim and the R button to shoot. You can hide in cover by using the circle button and the circle button will protect you from damage. You have regenerating health except on Elite, but we'll get to Elite eventually, I hope. You have a melee attack which you can throw out by pressing the square button. Unless you fuck up royally there like me and shoot before you actually attack the guy. That's that's brilliant of me. Good job, me. Thankfully, we just start back here. There are also checkpoints in these missions, thank God. So hopefully if I actually manage to clear this out again properly this time, we'll, um, we'll not get this wrong. FYI, operative. Eliminate the watcher overseeing the mess hall and you pretty much guarantee that the camera's pointed at you no longer matter. Over. There we go. <clears throat> you can also carry along two different weapons. You start out with the pistol and the you start out with the pistol and the weapon you chose. Pretty easy to understand stuff. Let's just throw a um a remote thing over here. Back away a little and blow it the fuck up. The guns are interesting, to say the least. Now, most of them are relatively good and useful tools. There's nothing particularly wrong with the guns themselves in Unit 13. Not really. It's mainly all the other mechanics related to them. Are you serious? God, those guys move quick. It's mainly related to the mechanics around the guns, which make them kind of annoying to use. You see, the thing about the... The thing about the aiming in this game, just in general, is that it's quite bizarre. Now, I have the sensitivity turned down really, really low. I have it at, like, one-fifth of the maximum at this point, right? So, really, I shouldn't be having a problem hitting anything. Unfortunately, I do, for multiple reasons. The main reason is that the game has auto-aim that is incredibly, like, unusual for a third-person shooter. I have played third-person shooters with way better aiming than this, because, hell, even something like Uncharted is miles ahead of this game, and allow me to explain why if I can actually, like, get the words out. So... It has auto-aim, and that's something that normal, most people, I should say, should probably appreciate. At least in most first, um, third-person shooters. But what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, I caught that on video. I'm quite happy about that. That's weird. I haven't seen that before, I gotta say. 
splat. <laughs> okay. Sure. Why not? What? Why? Why not? Why not? But yeah, the, the thing is, the aiming in this game is really weird because it moves to try and help you aim like most third-person shooters do. And that's absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that concept whatsoever. However, it is really, really finicky about it. Like, incredibly finicky. I'm not entirely sure why. The thing about it is that even when you're aiming almost over a dude... It feels like there is an invisible hand dragging your cursor towards the torso of the enemy that's in front of you. And that makes it really hard to aim precisely. Because it makes some of the... Whoops. It makes it really hard to aim precisely just due to the fact that the it just drags the cursor all over the place while you're trying to aim with it. It also seems that... When this is happening, the sensitivity of the aiming is way higher. But only if it's trying to... Oh god. The sensitivity of the aiming is way higher, but only if it's trying to drag it over a dude's thing for you. If you're actively fighting against it to say, aim for the head, it's not going to work. It's gonna feel like it's going through fucking molasses or something, because it's just so slow. And I really don't understand why they made it this difficult to handle. I'm just gonna throw that out there and try and... Yay, I got him! Double kill bonus. Fuck. I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to get these guys without dying. There must be another entrance to this room somewhere. I'll do, I suppose. Yeah, this combination of weird auto-aim and sometimes the aim sensitivity going way up and way down, just depending on what you're doing, it just, it never feels 100% consistent. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. And that's the worst thing about a third-person shooter that sometimes goes, goes first-person, because when it doesn't feel consistent, it's really hard to get a real feel for the game and trying to aim at the enemies. It's a bit of a bitch. Done. It's really not helped out by the fact that you've got to go for score. You see, this game is a score attack game. You need to get as many points as you possibly can. How do you get points? Well, by shooting people, of course. By doing things like melee attacks, headshots, pistol kills, uh... Stealth kills, stuff like that, just all in a row, right? Doing that will get you bonus points. And of course, doing them, as you can see, you can actually streak them as well. Like, see, there's another headshot and there's another to add to the streak. You also have a multiplier, which goes up as you do well and goes down as you get the shit shot out of you. Uh, do I have to climb this? Yes, I do. I'm just heading out the way that I would have come in if there were no enemies. Got it. So as you can see, my multiplier is slowly going down there. And the higher you have the multiplier, obviously, the more points you get. So you need to be trying to get as many points as possible. And considering that things like headshots give you... Considering that headshots give you more stuff to work with, more points... Our POW is in the cell block. You're moving towards operative. Bring him home safe. It means that, do not like to imagine what in some situations, you'll find yourself getting absolutely screwed over by the game because the aim just takes away your opportunity to get that cool headshot. And it sucks. Sometimes it works like here, but other times when there's a, like a bunch of dudes in a row and you need to get them all at once in order to not blow your cover or something, especially in the stealth missions, because in the stealth missions it gets ridiculous, but yeah. There is also a lightweight stealth system, which I'll have to demonstrate by playing a covert mission. I wonder if he's actually going to... Nope, he's just going to turn around and let me hit him in the back. Cool.
There we go. Now I can just free him, and we're good. Thank you. They are going to kill me. So yeah, when you really need to get those headshots to keep the streak going, but your auto aim just decides, no, this is not the time for that. This is the time for shooting him in the body. Yeah, you just feel like that the game's kind of screwed your way out of something there. And it can get really frustrating. The gameplay is also very heavy, but in some cases it's not actually the game's fault. Like, there's a... There's a very deliberate feel to how you move and how you aim and shoot, but there are a couple of things that work against you in this respect. One is... Our captured convoy is in that courtyard. One is the very heavy movement. That is somewhat okay. There's nothing particularly wrong with the movement, but when it, when it gets piled on with literally everything else, it can get really frustrating at times. The second is the camera. It's very bizarre, the camera in this game. And you want to know why? Because it's incredibly close to you. Like, I have not played a third-person shooter where the camera has been this close. It's so bizarre, just how close this can get. Like, watch what happens when I sprint. I feel like I'm taking up a full third of the screen there. I've never seen a camera that bloody... I've never seen a camera go that bloody close. It's so strange. Never seen anything like it. Oh, I got no cover there. I have to bound to the next one. And I got guys coming up behind me. Thankfully that minimap is very pretty decent, except that, God, the controls almost screwed me there. Definitely can be a bit of a dick trying to make that happen. Uh, one more coming at me from down the stairs here. Let's see if I can get... Oh no, he's not actually going to rush me. How unusual. But yeah, the camera is so close to you that it feels really constricting at times. It's also really hard to tell distance. You have to be right up against your targets just to make sure that you're not going to absolutely lose it. And that can be a real pain in the dick. And the other problem is the frame rate. The game's frame rate can absolutely tank. Like, you have no idea how bad this gets at times. If there's any more than a couple of enemies on screen... I can swear that the frame rate goes to single digits. It can get really bad really fast. And it makes the entire game feel incredibly heavy. To the point where it kind of beats out Killzone Mercenary. In how heavy it feels. How much of a chonker you feel like. If that's still a meme. I don't claim to follow memes. But anyway, that was an example of one mission. I wonder how I did on the leaderboard. 51,000. Fair enough. So, let's see. What should I play next? I should probably play something a little bit different. So, let's play, um... What about this one? Deadline. Cool. Let's, let's play Deadline. Who do they recommend for this one? online later today get into that prison rescue our agent and Gunna. keep that video from getting out cool we can play as him everything seems correct so let's go so the way deadline works is you have a time limit also we're apparently back on the same map because sure why not you have a time limit once you beat a certain objective or a objective depending on what the game decides you need to tackle first you get a little bit of extra time and you get a score bonus. Because what this game is going for is score. There is no story. It is basically just you going and shooting the shit out of a bunch of terrorists. This is perfectly fine by itself. And for the most part, the score attacking is okay. There are a couple of things that could be changed about it, but... For the most part, it works fine. 
The idea is that you get points for shooting people, you get the... You get points for shooting people, you get streaks, you get little bonuses here and there. There is also something I haven't quite gone over yet, and that is the idea that the, um... That's the idea that the way it works... is that certain characters get benefits to certain things. So, for example, since I'm playing as Gunner here, what Gunner gets is a bunch of bonuses related to his heavy machine gun work. So, he'll get bonuses for taking dudes down in two or three shots. He'll get bonuses for destroying more things. Yada, 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 yada. It's a similar sort of set of benefits depending on the character you're playing at pretty much all times. How the fuck am I supposed to do this? Oh, that's it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to raid that room. Maybe I should just chuck a grenade in. That would have been smarter. Thankfully, the game's load times are actually pretty good, all things considered. But yeah, the thing about it is just... Some of these benefits would be great if they applied to all people, because... Wait, what? Why did it put me there instead of actually behind cover? That doesn't make any sense. Great, thanks. But yeah, some of these benefits make no sense to restrict to one person just because of the... Snapping. Just because of... Some of them seem like they really should be more universal. Like being able to shoot out... Being able to shoot out some explosives in order to get score bonuses for them is locked to one character for some reason. Even if it was just a more major bonus for someone else, it still doesn't make that much sense to have it all restricted to one dude. And there are a fair few bonuses like this that do this, and it's a little bit disappointing if I'm being perfectly honest, mainly because of the idea that... It's a little bit disappointing, mainly because of the idea that the score attacking is so important in this game. There's really not that much else to the actual gameplay. Thankfully, this isn't that big of a deal, because the way the scoring in this game works is the majority of the points you get are related to the way you handle the objectives. Like, direct action doesn't have much in this sense. It mainly is like, you know, kill all the dudes, have good accuracy, and yada 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 yada, right? That's generally the way it works. You kill all the dudes, have the best accuracy, and just do well while you're doing it, you know, get multipliers and stuff like that, right? Like, see, there's my score bonus for doing this mission, part of the mission quickly, but now I have to, um, now I have to get to this clock down here, otherwise I'm going to run out of time, and they're going to reset me to the checkpoint. Thankfully, it shouldn't be too hard, although I will need to blow a couple of these up along the way. Reload and get some ammo on my way past. So now I've got a checkpoint. Go get him back, operative, and be quick about it. But yeah, most of the points you're going to get are related to things like doing the mission quickly on deadline, doing it with more health on the survival mode, that is elite, and in the case of... Uh, what was the other one? Covert, doing it without actually alerting or killing anybody. So... While those little minor bonuses might be a bit of a bitch to deal with, in the, in the particular case of most of the mission objectives and stuff like that, it's not that big a deal. You'll do just fine. You'll, you'll do absolutely fine just by playing the missions properly. Which is good. It means that... Oh, I have to go upstairs. Fuck. Affirmative, standing by. It means that all you really need to do is focus on the mission for good scores, although if you want to get the absolute best scores, you have to go into a level, then leave the level once you're aware of what the best character would be with the best benefits for that level, and then come back, which is frustrating to say the least. It seems completely unnecessary. Usually, the guy they assign you to will do fine, as in the guy that's recommended and is automatically picked at the beginning, and that's mainly what I've been doing. It's just kind of an annoying design decision like that, 
in order to... It's an annoying design decision to make it so that some characters will simply do better on some missions due to the layout of the mission of the level itself. But again, that's minor. Like, I just went through with this guy and there is absolutely no way that isn't a 5 star, even though it's not going to be a high score. Wow, operative. You tore through that mission like a human lightning bolt. Now, I'm going to have to do a covert level because, well, I'm, I have to demonstrate it, but I'm just going to warn you now that I hate the stealth levels. They are a massive pain in the dick. So you're always recommended to use the stealth guy for obvious reasons. And that's pretty much the reason why. Because he's always the best at the silent stuff. But the thing is, these missions work slightly differently to all the rest in that if you get seen, you have a couple of seconds to take out all the enemies that have seen you before the alarm gets raised. And there are also things like cameras and tripwires that will instantly fail the mission. So it definitely is a different way to play the game. Unfortunately, it just happens to be the most annoying way to play the game as well. Do what has to be done, I'm sure. Roger that. Being invisible is what I so we've got best. two dudes up ahead here. I'm just going to swap to my pistol because the pistols are always silent and you can see the things that need to be disabled in the way. Just him too. There we go. Oh. Did I just walk through a... Yep, I did. Didn't even see it and now I have to do the mission again. Really not helped out by the fact that your gigantic ass takes up most of the lower screen. Like, look where he, look where he is on the screen right now. If there was a laser tripwire at my feet, I wouldn't see it until it's too late if I was coming in from the wrong angle. And that is infinite frustration. Right, those two have been alerted, but they don't seem to have actually moved. Overall, the mission variety is okay. It's mainly going to be the same set of objectives, but at least they have the tendency to put everything on different maps. However, there are only nine maps in the game. If I hit the select button, I'll show you what I mean. So if we zoom out here, we can see that the map is actually split up into sections. Red, yellow, uh, there should be a blue section around here somewhere, and a green section. Now, all of the missions in this game, there are nine maps in this game... And each has their own variation on the... Each has their own variation. They have a deadline. They have a direct action. That's a weird-ass bug. They have a deadline. They have a direct action. They have a... Deadline, direct action, covert, and an elite. They've all got it. So... It is just worth noting that's a thing. So they at least have a different amount of variety going on. And they use different segments of the map a lot. But yeah, it's just worth saying that there will be a bit of repeats. There will be a fair few repeats as the game goes on. How do I get up there without seeing him up? I'm going to have to use the stairs over here, aren't I? Might as well leg it. I get the bad feeling there's going to be a camera or something around here that's going to spot me immediately, but... Oh well. Oh, he's right there with his back towards the door. That's convenient. Hi. And we got another guy in here. Guarding that laptop with his life. Just chuck a smoke in there. Or three smokes. I'll do the trick. You get a better score bonus if you get in without actually hurting or killing anyone. But I'm not going to bother with that. I've already been spotted. Like, as soon as it goes red. Like, those guys that... There were those guys that went red. When I, um... Walked up to them and melee one. The other guy went red. That means you've lost your bonus entirely. So, yeah. That was a covert mission. Went much better than the last take of this that I tried. Yeah, as you can see, unfortunately, I'm definitely not going to get the five stars on this one, but I'm going to get something decent, like three or four. 
too. Fuck you. Right, I just flipped off my screen. Why did I do that? So there is something else that adds a little bit to the variety and the longevity of the game. Dynamic missions. Now, all of these missions that you have seen so far have more or less been just like preset missions. Ones that with leaderboards and stuff like that. But, we can actually go and play a mission on dynamic mode. If we have more than three or more stars on it. See, do not earn star ratings or leaderboard scoring. They say they have random insertions and objectives. This isn't technically true. As far as I remember from playing the game beforehand... Uh, do I want to play as the marksman? No, let's play as, um... What's his face? Point me in. There we go, because he's got more health. So, he's also got a shotgun with slug ammo. Which is kind of ridiculous in this game, if I'm being perfectly honest. But yeah. While they say the mission objectives and insertion points are procedurally generated, I believe that's true... But it also works on a seed, so that if you take the same dude into the same mission, you'll get the same objectives every single time. At least that's what I think. I believe that's the case. But still, it means that you've got, like, something like a few hundred unique missions to go play through, even if they all are all relatively similar. So, if you are trying to get all your guys grinded up to level 10, at least it'll give you some different objectives to do every time. So what's it going to be doing here? I'm assuming that I'm going to have to... Oh, that was a mine. And I just lost half my health. Fantastic. This is what happens when I don't play the sound on. I can't hear the sound cues that tell me that the mines are nearby. So I guess I have to be more careful. Actually, I can't remember. Is this one of the people who gets a bonus for shooting these? No. Alright, so I might as well not bother. Uh, no. This is the heating air conditioning. Alright, so we got dudes. Facility. Slug. Slug. <laughs> Just two dudes dead immediately. Unfortunately, you don't get much ammo for slug shotties, so you need to just reload all the time. Where are the rest of these dudes? They must all be under here somewhere. Oh, yep, there's one, so I think I'll just chuck a grenade over. Two down. I don't want to jump from here, because that will kill... That, well, it won't kill me, but it will hurt. I'll just chuck another grenade in there, save myself the trouble. There we go. Ooh, I think I knocked his body a little bit. But yeah, elite missions just work the same way. The bonus for this one is getting out with as much health as humanly possible. So as long as I get to the uh, next area here without taking damage, I'll be fine. It actually looks pretty good for a 2012 Vita game, but it's not really helped out by the fact that the frame rate can be absolutely terrible when you've got more than a couple of enemies on screen at a time. And the audio is nothing worth writing home about. It's mainly just, like... I was expecting them to be right in front of me, but they weren't. That's a little unusual. Uh, the audio is nothing worth writing home about. There's unique voice clips for everyone, um, for every mission that isn't a dynamic one. And there is also things along the lines of, um... Hang on, if I just get close, I'm going to start it. There we go. Don't want to set these guys off too quickly. Sorry. Bushwhacked. You know, there, there are unique clips for every mission that isn't a dynamic one. And they do have... The, the six individual operators do have their own unique personalities. Shit. Didn't even see that one. Bit of a dick placement, i got to say. That guy's going to have a rocket launcher, which means he dies first. See if I can get this throw right. That probably wasn't right. Nope, okay.
But yeah, all the characters have a unique personality. Unfortunately, that personality is not particularly interesting. So yeah, as I said, there's no story or anything going on here. It's literally just... Shoot the bad dudes. Like, it almost gets silly after a certain point. Oh, cool. The escape point's right back up here, so I can just hop straight on in. That won't actually get me any sort of uh, progression to anything. It'll simply give me a little bit of XP boost to my dude. It's a neat idea, the dynamic missions. They give you a little bit more playtime. I just wish there was more to them. Since it's really just like playing something that's similar to a main mission over and over and over again. Which kind of sucks. Alright, so let's go play a high value target. Might as well be Hyena. Find and eliminate a notorious enemy figurehead. So it wants me to play Commando for this one. Do I want to? Well, I can take it along with an Ultimax or an ACR. We'll do with the ACR just so we don't have to... Just so I don't have to make you sit through nothing but slug fests over and over again. So the score attacking is fun. It's just kind of let down a bit by the fact that it's pretty similar stuff going on on every mission except mainly the stealth ones and even then those are more annoying than the actual missions. The gameplay is really heavy and it's not really helped out by the fact that the auto aim is a bit shit and the camera is a bit zoomed in and the frame rate is not particularly great. You need to eliminate the just you know, things like that that just accumulate into being more annoying things than they reasonably should be. But it's still a relatively decent shooter if you can put up with all of these things. You can accept and appreciate the idea that you are a, um, basically going to be a fat ass the entire- How did that miss? How did that melee attack miss? Fuck me. I hate the AI in this game when it decides to charge you because you generally don't realize they're charging you. Like, even with the minimap, it can be hard to tell if someone's actually charging you until it's too late to do anything about it. God, the aim is sensitive once you zoom in. It's so bizarre. Also, no gyro aiming. Like, it would have been great if this game had gyro aiming. It would actually really help. The variety is okay. The maps are used over and over again, but it's helped out by the fact that you can do things like dynamic missions for a little bit of extra replayability and stuff like that. But you're mainly here for the score attacking, and some people might be a bit disappointed by that. And I can understand why, because for people who are familiar with video games, they would know that Zipper Interactive were the people who made SOCOM, and this was their last game. In fact, they were shut down so quickly after Unit 13 came out that one might think that they were basically on the realm of bankruptcy anyway, so... Fucking minds, I swear to God. One might think they were on the realm of bankruptcy anyway, and... This is probably true, because even with the numbers that Unit 13 sold, it was still nowhere near enough to actually save the company. So, the main downside with Unit 13... It's not its weird aiming, it's unusual score attack focus on a... On a sort of, like, gaming marketplace that doesn't really focus on that sort of thing anymore. No, th those aren't really disappointments. They're neat ideas, but they're not disappointments. It's mainly the fact that it feels like it's wasted potential. Because you would think that the people who made fucking SOCOM would be able to do better than this. You'd think they'd have more ideas in their head about a tactical shooter on the Vita other than this. A two-player score attacking style modern shooter. Score attacking and modern, modern shooting don't work out that well.
the game itself is is okay. Like it's definitely got problems. And I can see that a lot of people would not like it for the really heavy shooting that somehow feels like you're being dragged around by the over insistent auto aim and all of that sort of junk, you know. But it's okay. It does what it does well enough. It's got enough there to keep you interested for a while. And it kept me interested for a while. I almost got the platinum, but... I don't know, seven years on and I'm just not that impressed anymore. And it just makes me wonder... What Zipper Interactive could have done... With... Six more months or another year in the oven with this game. It could have been a lot more impressive... They could have added a lot more unique ideas to it, and it might have been a lot more fun, but... I saw, I saw it just as I was backstepping. I was more focused on that one on the right. Thankfully, this isn't an elite mission, but... With high-value targets, you don't get checkpoint restarts, so you do have to... Really? What was that one? But yeah, with high value targets, you don't have the checkpoint restarts, so you do need to be relatively careful. It's not helped out by the fact that these missions are the hardest in the game by far. There, there are a couple of missions in the high value targets that are absolute douchebags. Like the wizard high value target, which I literally made a guide for, because to actually get through that mission, you need to be fucking mile high, high clubbing at the entire time. Otherwise, you will just die and die and die and die but yeah what else do I have to say about it can't tell you anything about the online co-op and I'm honestly surprised it hasn't been shut down yet because they've been shutting down other Vita related games like crazy so it seems weird that was there another one of those DM explosives there? Jesus! Oh uh, yeah, you get the idea. I'm not pulling you through all that again. So, let me just try and summarize everything again. Just to be fair. The shooting is decent. The score attack idea is actually pretty fun. And other than a couple of weird situations, it mostly pans out. The only downsides are that the frame rate isn't very good, the camera is way too zoomed in, which can really get in the way, the auto aim is ridiculously weird and inconsistent, and some of the difficulty spikes can be a little bit jarring, especially in the high value targets. But you get a decent amount of missions, a fair amount of like dynamic ones as well, that'll help you along, even though the variety of the maps won't keep up with it if you do plan on going for the platinum. And it's just, yeah, it's alright. It's not something that I would outright recommend, but if you've got 10 bucks and you're looking for a sort of score attack shooting game, well, it's... I can't imagine many other games to recommend to you, even on other platforms, let alone the Vita. Didn't try the online co-op, and frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this video goes out, that online co-op stuff is dead, because it just seems weird that it's still up these days. It's been seven years. Just while we're here, there's your settings. They're all fairly basic. I don't remember if I did it earlier on in the video. But yeah, that's um, that's pretty much all I have to say. It's a shame, really. Would have been better if Zipper Interactive got another six months to work on it. But yeah, it just it wasn't going to happen by, the, by how quickly they died after the game came out. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.